What is up, creator? It is awfully good to see you today. We're going to set up Facebook Gaming with OBS. And what we'll dig into first is connecting your game to OBS Studio and then setting up OBS Studio to connect with Facebook Live. That way you can play your games to the planet Earth using the Facebook venue. Let's get some. Okay, I'm going to make some general assumptions about you. I'm assuming that you have your favorite game installed. I'm assuming you have a desktop computer running Windows 10. I'm assuming that you have OBS Studio installed, and I'm assuming that you have a Facebook account, okay? Also, I want to make sure that you understand that this is best case scenario for me. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the best setup for you based on the game you're playing. I'm using Planet Side 2, and... Um, I'm going to show you how to connect this game to OBS so that you can use it over at Facebook. So let's get started with that right now. Okay, let's pop over to OBS real quick and I want to review the three sources that are available to bring your game into OBS. The first one is called Game Capture and it works well when your game is in full screen mode. In fact, if it is full screen, the source will automatically recognize it and show it. But some games don't work well with it. And in my example, which is Planet Side 2, it doesn't seem to work very well with it. So the next one that you want to fall back on is Window Capture. And that allows you to control the dimension of the screen in a better, more effective way, in my opinion. So this tutorial will explain that. And if that doesn't work with your game, the third and final option, which will pretty much work with every scenario, is Display Capture. And that basically just records your full viewing area on your desktop. But the problem problem with that is, sometimes when other applications pop up during gameplay, those windows or screens will show up and disrupt your live stream. So yes, display capture is awesome, but it has some drawbacks. This tutorial is going to be centered around using window capture because I'm going to show you how I controlled the dimension of the window so that it fits beautifully into the OBS screen. Let's go. Okay, we've got OBS up and running. Let's start up Planet Side 2. Okay, Facebook requires that the resolution be 1280 by 720. So I want to make sure that we're outputting that resolution from OBS Studio. So let me tab into that right now. Alt tab, and there's OBS. Let's go into settings and go to video and make sure that we are outputting to that dimension. It looks like that our base canvas, or what I work from, is at uh, 1080p, which is 1920 by 1080. I think that what I'm going to do is make that also 1280 by 720. I'll do the same thing with my output, naturally. 1280, there it is, 1280 by 720. Just so that you clearly understand, the base canvas resolution is the physical screen size that you see within OBS, the workable area. The output scaled resolution is the video size being sent out of OBS and being received by the Facebook live stream server. In most cases, I think that you're going to want to have these both at the same dimension. That way you can clearly wrap your head around what sizes are being sent to the live stream server. But if you're having lag, I'm guessing that it would be much better to make the output resolution smaller because that requires that less data is being sent to the server. Also a restriction from Facebook Live is their frames per second. So we're going to change that to what they require, which is 30. And I will hit apply and OK. Now let's move in over to planet side and make the required adjustments there. So I'm going to click and hold my alt and click tab and tab over there. Okay, now we're in the game. I'm gonna go into settings in the lower right hand corner and I'm gonna select the display mode and I don't wanna be in full screen windowed. It seems to give you more control over the resolution or the workable size when you're in the windowed mode. And then I'm gonna select the resolution that is closest to 1280, is it uh, 12, 1280 by 720? Let's see what they have to offer. Maybe we'll get lucky and they'll have that resolution here for us. 1280 by 768, 1280, 800, 1280, 960. They do not. So I'm going to pick the one that's closest, which is 1280 by 768. Maybe your game will have 1280 by 720, but in this case, I do not. So I just try to get as close as I can. Now I'll hit Alt and Tab over back to OBS. And now I'm going to create my source to bring that game into OBS. So I'll click the plus sign in the lower left-hand corner in Sources. And I will select 
window capture. And the reason why I don't choose game capture is because it has the difficult time with planet side on my computer for some reason. It just doesn't want to work. So I will type planet side full screen and I will hit OK. And it brings it in. Let's see here. In the window pull down, it's already selected, so we're good there. Capture method is automatic. Window match priority, cover content, everything's okay. I'll hit OK. And it looks like it's a little bit off, so I'm going to shrink it down by holding the handle here and bringing it down so I can see where we are with size. And then I'm going to drag it out. So as you can see, there's a lot of left and right air because it's not the exact workable resolution. It's a little bit different. So I'm going to hold the shift key and just stretch it without adjusting its dimension too much. I don't want to make it too obvious that I'm stretching it to make it fit as best as I can within the given parameters. I think that looks pretty good, actually. I'm not too worried about that. I'll stretch the bottom out just a tad more, just so it doesn't look too funky. Excellent. Let's move on. Okay, let's go into Facebook and get the necessary parameters set up. Here we are. It is uh, www.facebook.com forward slash live forward slash create. You'll know you're there when you see a header with a lady looking at a screen and a blue button called create live stream. Click that button and you are presented with the live stream information. Make sure that you provide a title here. Make sure that you add a little description. Nobody's going to read it, but add the description. There's a toggle button and it talks about multiple screens. I don't know if that's important. You can add tags here. I would recommend that you check off use a persistent stream key. That way the stream key doesn't change every couple of days or whatever. It's always the same number and so you don't have to worry about pasting it all the time if you plan on doing a lot of live streams down the road. The settings. The stream settings are also something you should look at. Uh, end the live video if the stream stops. I just wanted to cut in and let you know that this toggle switch is dependent upon the quality of your connection to the internet. I have fiber to the home. In other words, I've got a fiberglass cable that comes right in and my internet connection is very dependable and that's why I recommend that you turn it on. But if your internet connection is kind of spotty and you have been disconnected while live streaming from time to time, it would be best to turn this off because it will be much easier to reconnect to the stream if it's switched off. Just wanted to let you know. Broadcast this as a spherical video. I don't think that would be a normal setting for most people. Unpublish live video after the video ends. I don't know that you'd want to turn that off. That means that the video would just vanish. Allow viewers to rewind. And if there's any way of giving your viewers more power, I would recommend that you do it. Just makes for better engagement. Turn on auto-generated captions. Okay, I don't know if you'd want to have that turned on. I don't turn that on from time to time. Allow viewers to message you. I, I think that's a good one to have turned on as well. And then all you have to do is copy the stream key parameter here. So all you have to do is click this button called copy and it puts it into your computer cache. And now we can go back into OBS. Okay. And we go into the settings button on the far right go into stream, then select service, select Facebook Live, server is default, and then paste in that stream key that was put into cache and hit apply and go. Now I can select start streaming and you get a green light which means that it's sending signal to Facebook but you're not live just yet. Go back into Facebook, I'll hit alt tab, Okay, scroll up. You can see that the game is there. And at this point, all you have to do is click go live in the lower left hand corner. That button then turns to red. It says end live video. You are live. As you can see, the button in the upper left hand corner is there. So congratulations. You are now playing a game live on Facebook. If this is the first time to the channel, I want to welcome you. You can think of me as a video software technology explorer. I'm on a constant quest to find all the cool software to make your videos more engaging for your audience. If you like what you hear, subscribe and click the bell for new video notification every single week. Now my next video that I have set up for you is how to set up a Facebook gaming page. Just click this link right here and I will see you over there at that video. Best wishes, stay strong, keep fighting. I will see you at the next video.